Hello people, my name is Rage and welcome one and all to Black Desert, an MMORPG of gargantuan proportions and just unparalleled epicness. Ever since this game was first announced over a year ago, it probably is or at least feels like it, I have been looking forward to it like crazy. Its feature list alone seemed to put it ahead of every other MMO ever made. Now, this is Korean open beta that I am currently playing. This game is not going to come to EU and America till 2016. And that is a shame, but at least it does mean it has a year of extra development, which is always a good thing. Now, I am in the Korean open beta simply because I just I just had to try it. I just love the idea of this game and I just had to give it a go. So I went through a ridiculous series of instructions and tinkering with my computer to get this to work. So it's not something you can just hop into, but what I have been playing so far makes it so worth it. This MMO is incredible and this video is simply to just make you aware of it. I just want to talk about it a little. I don't really know the structure. I just kind of want to wax lyrical about stuff to do with Black Desert. So it's an open world sandbox MMO. And even that doesn't really do it justice. If we have a look at the map then, let's start with the map. The overworld map is the best map in any MMO I have ever played. You can see the current position of the sun in the sky on a star chart because the day, time, and night time affects things in the world. You have loads of good information, a ridiculously good in-game quest helper, though quests aren't really the main focus of this game. It's just enjoying and experiencing the world, and it's honestly, it's gonna be so hard to just start telling you about it. So let's assume then, all right, that I, I wanna go to this dude over here and hand in a quest in this town. You see this line that you've got up? That's cool. It's a guide. And look, this is my character here stood on the map. These little 3D images of everywhere I've explored. Is that not really neat? And what this game does is Yes, you can run there. You can run there as the crow flies. I could go straight diagonally across here and not follow this line and get there faster. But what you have the ability to do off the bat, which is really neat, is simply let your character run there themselves. And then you can just go do whatever. And this may come across initially as, really, that seems kind of lazy and maybe even a bit casual. And I kind of thought that. But the more you get into it, the more it makes bloody sense. What's the kind of busy work in an MMO once you've got, once you're used to the world and stuff? Walking from place to place and being able to just press a button and have your character go to where you want? Well, that is pretty damn wonderful. It's such a useful feature and it works realistically. Your character tends to stick to roads and places you would actually walk. It doesn't try and cross country you, which is really quite neat. So I'm going to stop here before we actually go to the town and I can show you just how quality this world is. First of all, the graphics. They're on max right now and it just, it looks beautiful. I am playing as the Sorceress class. There are gender locked classes, but there is going to be a male and female of each one that differ slightly, but are inherently the same class, which I like as well. So in MMO then, you're probably wanting to see the combat, and the combat is where this game absolutely shines. It is action combat, so I can just start using my moves around the place, and you can either use your moves via a hotbar like I've got at the bottom, or everything works in combos like an actual fighting game. So if I'm holding right click here to fire my dark aura, then I combo it with S, I start making it powerful, and then I combo it with left click, and I can start throwing waves of dark darkness on my enemies and every single class's abilities look incredible. Look when I dodge while firing this, the sort of purple after image I leave. It is so, so cool. Firing dark spikes out of the ground, being able to, let me find an actual enemy there, and I can, if I want to, sink into the ground and teleport around, and it's just wonderful. So if I find these guys, then I can start channeling this sort of dark orb thing, which powers lightning around 
around them black lightning, which also heals me, and it just looks absolutely wonderful. So the sorcerer is kind of a melee mid-range hybrid that also uses a bit of spellage and the like. There's also a parkour system in the game. You can actually climb and hop over things and make your way up buildings, and it's a proper interactive parkour system. No spam jumping against surfaces. And little things, like if I wanted to turn around in another MMO and go the other way, I would just kind of teleport round. But as it currently is, if I'm sprinting, actual momentum is a factor. You can't just instantly turn around. I have to slowly turn around like you would in real life. You can't just do a 180 teleport and continue. So it really has that going for it. And then if you want a further example of just how incredible the skills are in this game. Let me show you this. This is called Dream of Destruction and I channel this ball of darkness above my head that lets me float round while holding it and then like Goku himself I can spirit bomb that bitch for a massive darkness explosion. It is just so inherently wonderful to play as it really really is. So if we head over to the town here then I'm going to show you another few cool little elements. This is really going to be an inherent crash course. Here's some cool stuff in Black Desert. It's cool, right? And I'm not going to go into too much detail. So this carriage that's coming past us, you can get and own these as a player in order to transport... In fact, yeah, look, this is owned by the guild, Pioneers of the Black Desert, and they're transporting their goods around between villages. And yes, I mean goods. Trade, warehouse, property management, you can own workers... It's really ridiculously in-depth, this game. And look, when I walk past this guy, I'm actually going to shove past him. And he's going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Look, you actually interact with NPCs. You don't just phase through everyone. Everyone has a presence and is solid in the world. And that is absolutely fantastic. It really, really is. And then also, just as a little thing, you can just crouch along the ground. And then if you really feel like it, you could get your stealth on and just crouch. Well, why? Because why not? You can do so much in this game. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's just a big, seamless, open world. Your character opens doors to go in buildings with no loading screens, which is something I always really enjoy. This building and this town is owned by the guild that has this W symbol. So you're going to have their flags around the place and guards are going to be holding their banners for them, as you can see this dude over here. But look at this as a village in an MMO. How alive does this feel? You've got people doing their jobs in market stalls and all the intricate buildings with all the stuff going on inside, people having conversations. You can literally go eavesdrop on them if you so wish. And a lot of the time you can sit down on places if you just back into them. They don't even need to be places you could actually sit down. Now it's still in beta, so I'm kind of phasing hovering, but you can just do so much stuff that makes sense. Just a random dog wandering around town. Does it not look absolutely absolutely just, I mean, satisfying to just be in a world like this. And you're seeing people on horses and the like. I'm going to go to the stables and retrieve my ass just so I can show you how that works. Assuming I remember where it is even located. There we go. This guy should be the one. So we have a talk to him and everybody actually does have voice acting. Granted, it's currently in Korean, so you're not going to get much out of it. But let's get my horse, who is currently called Mmm. Now, your horses can be killed. They can carry stuff for you. They are obviously a nice speedy upgrade. And yes, they have a floating parking symbol when you're above them. And the horse is a great example of uh, actual realistic movement. I cannot just flip round quickly because a horse obviously can't do that. I have to rear him round in a circle in order to get this going. And then we can actually get into a gap gallop and it all works really, really well. It's just, it's just a very satisfying mount system. Your horse actually whinnies and comes to a sliding stop if you want to just suddenly stop. And all this detail in animation quality around the entire world, it's just petrally there and it's it's wonderful. I mean, what can I say? And then we've got his pouch that he's got. We can obviously, you know, be sympathetic to a horse, give him a stroke, give him a little rub, make him happy. It's all good. Let me go take him back to the stables then. I love the floating parking symbol. It's a little bit just okay, but it's also rather amusing. Let me 
I drop him back off here. There you go, horsey. Go home and enjoy. No, soldier, I don't want to talk to you. I want the dude that's in charge. There we go, and I can stow my mount once again. I don't want him to end up being killed anywhere, so I'm just going to leave him there for now. So yeah, combat system, ridiculously in-depth. Combo-based, action-based. I mean, look at this, the actual water and mud detail that we're walking through in the start of this town here, leaving our footprints in the muddy, slicky ground. Just this game oozes detail from every single paw. It really does. So if we go to the map then, if I click on this town, every single one of these grey squares and blue squares is a property that I can buy. I currently own this, which I'm using as a warehouse, and this, which I'm also using as a warehouse, but you can turn it into workshops, into shipyards, into refineries, into your own home where you can buy and make furniture and decorate it. This is the most in-depth player-owned property and housing system I have ever seen by a country mile. It is ridiculous. And then the actual map itself, if we go back to the overworld, every single one of these grey areas is a location where you can get trade from. If I was to connect my hometown via a trade route to this northern camp, then I connected it to this Hidel pathway over here, and then if I connected it to this goblin cave, I can buy a load of workers, set them mining copper and logging by the goblin cave, physically watch them do that, they would mine the resources, put them on a carriage, the carriage would follow my trade route, whoop, there we go, calm down there son, follow my trade route back to town and deliver the raw resources to my warehouse, it doesn't just teleport around, it physically happens, your trade routes can get attacked by players and bandits and you can have soldiers defend them, and talking of soldiers defend them, you can own entire castles in this game, and hire armies to be your army that defends it, and when players invade, you can straight up dynasty warrior brutalize your way through them, and it is just wonderfully satisfying, it really, really is. Let me head over here, hop up this wall. Now, there's certain things that you can and can't parkour over, but considering this is an MMO, it is a very, very competent system. If I hop onto there, hop onto there, and you just see how easy it is, just a nicely pack all around the place. It really works wonderfully. So that is a ridiculously quick crash course. Even this statue, it just looks really, really nice. If I go into this and then teleport over to it, it's just... It's just lovely, isn't it? And the actual game itself works in a way that no other MMO I have seen do. Because you need to earn knowledge about a town and creatures before you can do things. Say a, a quest character has a quest for me, an NPC. I couldn't actually speak to them until I learn about them, learn about the town, talk to random folk, understand what's going on here, and then I could go to this NPC with problems I've heard about and actually get the quest. It's it's very kind of like how you actually would be. You're an adventurer, you've entered a town, you've got to get the lowdown, the skinny on what's going on. I do rubber band a bit because obviously I'm on a Korean server from the EU, so ping is a slight issue, though it's not been that bad actually, surprisingly. And also with enemies, Enemies. You can't actually see how much damage you're doing to a given enemy type until you have killed and watched enough of them to learn about them as a creature, as a species, to understand how your attacks are affecting them, and then you can see their health bars go down. And just little neat things like that really come together with this very fleshed out detailed world to make something quite incredible. Now, in terms of actual questing, it is very much go here, kill this, escort this, find this, there is nothing innovative or exemplary about the questing. It's really basic, run-of-the-mill, you've seen it a million times. But because literally everything else is ground-breaking and wonderful, you don't care at all. And the thing is, leveling and questing and killing is not really the focus. It's just an aspect of this world. You can become a trade leader in a trade guild or... There was also faith guilds to be a religious guild, but I think they removed that for some reason that I can't quite remember. But the point is, 
the combat and questing is just an option of stuff to do. There is no level up, get to end game, and then do end game stuff. There is just, you are in the world, do what makes you happy, and combat and questing is an option, not the main thing that you should be doing with occasional distractions. And that's a very cool thing. It truly is sandboxy, and it, it just... It works, and hell, even being able to see my character on the minimap progressing down this route, how nice is that? It's just lovely little touches everywhere you look, and it's still in beta, it's not even finished yet, and that is damn impressive, it really is. And even the story for an MMO is quite good. You wake up and you are contacted by a black spirit that becomes part of you that you can summon at will. It starts the game as a little shadowy blob with red eyes and as you do quests for it, it grows and evolves and mine currently looks like this, which is a little bit freaky. And he's like your companion and basically you're helping him learn about the world. For example, you do a quest where you kill some imps and you talk to him, tell him you've done it for him and he's like, Oh, you really slaughtered those imps. I wonder what it would be like to die. It's like, okay, you're creepy. You are very creepy. And it's a really nice way of getting around having a constant NPC guide. Having this creepy, you're not sure if good or evil, black spirit inhabiting you that you consistently have to do things for. Seriously, the spell. I'm just in love with this spell. Hey guys, don't mind me. I've just got a massive ball of boom. Oh. It's good. It is very, very good. Let me go turn in a quest then. I've got to this guy over here. And we get ourselves an extra bit of uh, inventory space. Inventory space, you just unlock extra slots as you go and go along, which is a very natural way of doing things. One complaint I do have is that armor doesn't really seem to change your character that much, but that's because I'm very early on in the game. 20 out of a maximum 55. So that's how that works. So that's a very quick crash course of the actual in-game world, but I have not done it justice in the slightest, and don't kind of think you know everything, because I don't even know half the stuff you can do in this world. There is so many activities, it's just... It's just ridiculous. It really is. I cannot wait to try PvP. With this combat system, it's going to be wonderful. So the last thing I want to show you before I leave you off with this just effectively tease of this MMO that you should keep an eye on is I am going to go to character screen and actually on each server all of your characters belong to the same family name so they affect your other characters like in gta when you zoom up go to someone else and zoom back in it works like that in this game any trade routes i set up on galalala have the warrior over there will be available for my alicia sorceress so it's like she knows him and they're all part of this same family and clan all of your characters all working in the world at once and that's a neat little way to treat people having multiple characters i like how they've set that up so the last thing we're going to show then there's also a weight equipment load that you have in this game so you've got to make sure you're not too heavy i'm a little bit over it there's just details details everywhere so i am going to select a different server in you know my flawless korean here and go for the very promising looking ochiba 2o server over here we'll go on the first channel and we'll create a character now the character creator in this game is unbelievable best i've ever seen head and shoulders above everything the class is currently in game and this is not all of them they are adding many others like a wizard for example so we got warrior how cool is this armor it's not crazy armor it's not massive shoulders of spiky doom but Boy, does it look cool. So you got your warrior, you've got your ranger with the bows, and even then that armor, it's not ridiculous. It's, I mean, you know, it's a little bit Eastern MMO-y when you've got stuff like this that doesn't really serve that good protection. You know, the sorceress, which I was playing as, who tends to keep in very kind of understated armor. And then giant is a class by itself, a massive brute who uses his size and strength to annihilate everyone. You've got a tamer who summons a black wolf that she could use in battle and ride on. You've got a blader whose armor looks ridiculously cool, who's an actual traditional samurai doing draw slashes with his katana and proper choreographed katana moves, also using his bow like samurais did. You've got a valkyrie who's a lightly armored female warrior, effective 
effectively. And then you've got female Blader, who is a much more agile fighter than the male one. So which if we actually go on to character creation then we'll have a look at the male and female what you can do is just unreal so she's gonna slowly take her time you choose a sign which doesn't really do anything just gives you a bit of flavor so i always go dragon you can change the weather you look at your character just just in case you know you need the full thing you can obviously do the voice by editing its actual pitch so if we go to hairstyle you know, we got various hairstyles, it's whatever, and then you've got hairstyles that are locked, which I don't really agree with having to pay for hairstyles, but in a current beta, it's by the by. So what I can do, you see all these lines around her head, you can actually individually edit parts of her hair and actually change individual patches of strand length in the actual hair it, it just it kind of boggles my mind that they felt the need to let you adjust certain parts of the hair and how long it actually is so you can fully create the ideal hairstyle that you actually want to go on it, it just it's so detailed it really is and then you've got all the various colors and the likes that's just the hair let's go to the face then obviously you've got various skin tones you've got various stuff like that which you could let's go let's whack up the intensity so you can actually see it things like this you've seen mmos before it's nothing crazy just various decorations on the character like so Let's whack that back down, and then if we go to the eyes, you can give them, like, star and heart irises, because why not? And only in the left eye, okay, we don't want to be going too crazy, we want a star and a squiggle, you know, you gotta really... And then we can edit the iris individually with colours, alright, on the just the right eye, and if we go to the lens, we can adjust the actual covering of the eye. Let's, let's swap to the left eye now, give this one this, rack up the op opacity, make it red, and there we go. Have you seen an editor like that for freaking eyes? It's just ridiculous. And you got various tattoos that you can put on, as you might expect, and then you can get your character all wrinkled if you feel like them being a little bit old. But what I like in this game is that characters generally are restricted to their age. For example, you cannot make a young wizard, which I think is kind of cool. So then we go to the body. And this is where it gets ridiculous. You can individually edit every single... Those jiggle physics, what do you expect? You can individually edit every single section of each character's body. Giraffe neck there, doing really well. Let's uh, make it as tall as possible. <laughs> but you can do stupid things with this. And if we go on... Uh, edit pose here we can have individual control and you can actually pose your character to properly see how everything's going in the editor it's just that not just why i mean it, it's cool and all i guess tattoos and the like uh, it, it just it boggles my mind if we go back to face then what i didn't show you is actual face shape you can individually edit patches of the face to create literally the perfect look and it's not just sliders that is one scary character you actually can see the patches you're affecting so while it's complicated it's also simple it's a very very <laughs> It's a very, very effective character creator. It really is. So let's create ourselves a blader as well, just so you can get the comparison. <laughs> Oh, this character creator, you could have a lot of fun with it. And then we've also got this, which is the muscle slider. So you can get, like, Schwarzenegger level of bodybuilding. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. And it just, it goes on and on, as you can see. It's just wonderful. And, you know, you've got hundreds of poses you can see your character in. In case you really want to make it fine. You can spend so long on this character creator. It's stupid. And you can save your creations for future characters and it's just it's just wonderful so there you go guys a very quick look at this game crash course in black desert i will be following it throughout release i will be updating you i'll probably end up doing videos on it and boy will i be playing it like hell it's good it's massive <laughs> and I'd recommend following it yourselves. Any questions, let me know in the comments. Anything you'd like to say about what's going on, 
it's just good. I need to show you the skill system and stuff like that. There is so much to cover, and it will happen in due time. But for now, my name is Rage. Remember to like if you've enjoyed this. It really does help, guys, and I do appreciate it. And subscribe for more. Oh, goodbye.